Hello, hello. Today is such an awesome spring-like day in the dead of winter. So we did what any normal person does and took a peek at our overwintering Dahlia tubers. I am loving myself for pushing through last fall and dividing them all. Not something realistic to do each year, but last fall we were able to get them all done and happily tucked away for the winter. Many of you are most likely finalizing your dahlia tube or orders, or perhaps getting ready to tackle dividing your saved dahlias. Dahlias steal our hearts and are not the cheapest of investments, but being able to properly store and divide them, they will reward you with a bounty of tubers. Most likely, if you've been bitten by the dahlia bug, you are planning on dividing and building your own tuber stash. Some questions I know I had in the beginning with dahlias and dividing was how the heck to divide? What tools are the best for dividing? When is the best time to divide them? What is even an eye on a dahlia mean? How do I store them in our zone six and do so successfully? When I first started dividing dahlia tubers, it was incredibly intimidating to me. Especially when you only have a handful of clumps, it feels like a life or death situation. Okay, well that's dramatic, but you get my point. Any slip up or possibility of slip up where you can cut or break the tubers seems overwhelming. Out the gate, I am here to tell you, you will accidentally break necks of tubers and you may toss a tuber that would have developed eyes. It happens, even to the pros. This is why I recommend when starting your Dahlia division, start with the varieties you don't mind goofing up on. Save your favorites for when you get into the groove of dividing. Another challenge we encountered was storing our tubers in our incredibly arid climate. Through trial and error, we figured out the best method for our situation and climate, which we will share with you in a bit. Right now, let's tackle when to divide clumps. Dividing in spring or fall, which one is best? There's pros and cons to both. Let's be honest, most flower farmers end up having to do a little bit of both because of time constraints. We planted over 600 clumps of dahlias last May, along with about 85 of our own saved tubers. This will seem like a lot to some, but peanuts compared to others. The amount we had resulted in me for weeks lifting, washing, and dividing tubers. I was dividing tubers as soon as it warmed up enough outside until dark. It was a beast of a task for mainly one person to tackle. My husband swore I was gonna lose a finger. Well, I showed him. I didn't, but came close a time or two. Definitely learn to stop dividing once your fingers are too cold and lose feeling. Dividing in the fall is beneficial if you can push through and that it will take less storage space, which storage is always a huge issue for us, than storing full clumps of tubers. It also helps from the tubers rotting that may infect others. Fall dividing should also give you a good snapshot of what you will have to overwinter and what you need to order in the fall. Some cons is time constraints. There's just so much to do in fall prep. Also, some of the eyes on the tubers can be a little trickier to see. Some varieties are bashful in showing those pretty eyes until spring. Spring dividing can be beneficial in that eyes are easier to see and hopefully you have fully recovered from end of season burnout. Either time you choose to divide is completely your choice. There is no wrong or right way, just what works for you. Before getting into dividing the tubers, knowing the different parts of the tuber and how they work together is a must in order to divide successfully. We have the crown, the neck, and the tuber body. All three parts of the tuber need to be intact in order for the tuber to be viable. The eyes are found on the crown, which is the topmost part of the tuber. This is where the dahlia stalk will shoot out of. The neck, which is the most fragile part of the tuber, is what connects the eyes to the body. It is the middle part. If the neck is broken, even if the crown has eyes, the tuber is no longer viable. The tuber body is where all the energy has been stored for the dahlia. The energy stored is what makes you not having to go crazy in fertilizing dahlias. They have stored a majority of their needs for the season. 
If the neck is broken, the crown and eyes have been broken off from the energy source, making the tuber useless. With that said, if there is some rot on the tuber body or if you've accidentally sliced it while lifting, that's me, it can be cut off and still be a viable tuber. Ideally, the tuber body should remain intact minus the small portion you cut off for inspection at the end, but ideal is not a requirement. Another key part is sanitation. I cannot emphasize enough the importance of sanitation. Dahlias can easily be infected with disease and not show it until the following season when all of a sudden you are experiencing crop failure. Disease such as gout spreads easily. This is also why even during the harvesting season, it is imperative to sanitize clippers in between plants. Same diligence needs to be applied in dividing dahlia tubers. Once we lift our clumps, we take the clumps to our washing station where there they are hosed off. Also set up at our washing station, we have bins of diluted bleach, various clippers, pruners, and box cutters in a jar of diluted bleach solution as well. In between each clump we are dividing, the dividing tools go back into the sanitation solution to not spread disease. To divide the clump, you need to have it washed off, inspected for disease, and then you can begin cleaning the clump up. At first, that clump is going to look like a hot mess of a wreck, and it can be overwhelming to know where to start. I get it, but you got this. Begin with cutting off the roots, the tubers that look more like ugly rat tails, and any broken or rotted tubers, and cutting down the remainder of the stalk. By this point, the clump should be a lot easier to see and start dividing. Going down where the stock nub is, start with cutting the tuber clump in half. From there, cut each half down to a quarter, all the while making sure not to cut through an eye. Take each quarter of the clump and begin cutting into individual tubers. As long as the crown of a tuber is at least one centimeter and the neck is intact, it's a keeper. Some clumps are not as straightforward, especially if entire clumps were planted in the spring. It can be quite a mess. Go slow. Sometimes we even cut off the individual tubers from the stem as we go. As you get more comfortable, you will naturally be able to puzzle your way through. There are going to be some tubers that may share an eye or a crown. Where it becomes too tricky to divide these, or if you divide them, it won't leave you enough of the crown. That's okay, you can store them together. It doesn't hurt to have two tuber bodies attached to the crown. It'll just give the dahlia a little more energy, an extra boost when planted. If one tuber is tiny and skinny, kind of like a rat tail, even with a crown and eyes, it most likely will not make it through the storage process, discard those. When in doubt, go for the healthier, more robust looking tuber and sacrifice the small weak ones. Once your tuber is divided, cut the bottom of the tuber that has a little root tail off to prevent it from rotting in storage. Then place the tubers in the sanitation solution for a couple minutes. While those are soaking, you can begin processing your next clump. Don't forget to sanitize your equipment in between clumps. After this couple of minutes, you can remove the previous tubers from the sanitation solution. Lay them out in a single layer. We use bulk crates with tags and allow them to dry. The tubers should be dry to the touch, but before there are signs of shriveling. On a warm sunny day, this could be the matter of minutes. On a cold cloudy day, it can be longer. We live in an extremely dry climate. If your climate is more humid, the drying process will take longer. Keep a watchful eye on those tubers. You want the tubers to be dry before placing them into storage. If they are still wet to the touch and are placed in storage, this will cause rot resulting in possible tuber loss.
you can choose to store the tubers directly into shavings, peat moss, or vermiculite in your chosen storage container, not having them directly touching. Smaller storage boxes can be nice with this option to have them organized by variety. You could also opt to store them in plastic baggies with the storing medium in there. You can also write the variety name on the tuber with a permanent marker or one designed specifically for writing on Dahlia tubers and store all the tubers together in a big bin like a big happy family with storage medium. These methods would be ideal for climates that have more humidity or a storage area that is climate controlled. Our current situation, however, is we have a garage and we live in an arid environment. We have had struggles with our tubers getting too dried out using these previous methods. Though we aren't fans of single-use plastic, this is one area where we have chosen to use it. We have had over 95% success rate in storing our tubers once we began using the saran wrap method. With the saran wrap method, you can store an entire clump worth of individual tubers not touching in one roll. Uh, for us, it keeps the tuber from drying out and it saves us space. Instead of using, you know, individual baggies or storage boxes, we can use the plastic wrap and keep harvested clumps together with plant label tucked in. One key part about using this method, the tubers have to be properly dried or you will absolutely have tuber rot. As our infrastructure grows, we will reassess the saran wrap method since we are not the biggest fans of using plastic, but for now we are even less fans of losing Dahlia tubers. Lastly, you need to place your stored tubers in optimal conditions to overwinter. Place tubers in an area that maintains about 50 degrees Fahrenheit but will not freeze. Be sure to check on them throughout the winter every couple weeks or so. How we store them is we take the wrapped tubers and tuck them into a large storage tote with pine shavings as insulation. Then they are stored in the garage until spring. Our garage may be a little chillier than we prefer, but we have successfully stored the tubers there. On especially cold nights, running a little space heater or even just doing a load of laundry helps maintain the temperature better. If the dahlias are stored indoors where it is warmer, they will begin to sprout prematurely. Keep them below that 50 degrees. Okay, some side notes for you. Each variety of dahlia varies in tuber production. Some produce tons of tubers while others less. For example, Cornell's are huge producers for us and Geneva was less of a producer. Some produce tiny tubers and others produce goliath sized tubers. Example, our mini palm dahlias had smaller than our medium or dinner plate varieties. Even the color of the tubers can change. Chickadee tubers had a red tinge to them, while our small world tubers were more white when first lifted. Eventually, in storage, they all become brown. Note taking becomes imperative to learn the different traits of these varieties. Also, some varieties handle storage better than others. By taking notes on this, you can better anticipate the amounts of each variety you will be working with, which will give you an idea of what to reorder, sell, crop plan for, etc. As with everything in flower farming, there is not a one size fits all. Once you put yourself in the box or put one practice of another on a pedestal without taking into consideration their unique microclimate, infrastructure, labor crew, etc., you are setting yourself up for potential failure. We have definitely learned this the hard way. This is where note-taking and trial and error helps tremendously. Experiment and see what works for you under your situation. There are basic parts to the process that remains the same, such as sanitation and not breaking necks, but there are also so many parts that can be customizable to form to your farm, your business, and your climate. This was a huge topic. While dah dahlia dividing may seem like a daunting task, it is absolutely worth it. We threw a ton of information your way. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. As always, we are looking forward to helping you hand bloom soon.